Hi everybody, welcome back. So I am going to have another entry here in the Blue Note 1500 project. And just some logistical pieces before I get into this one, and then this is a great album we're going to talk about. But I'm going to do this one, which is 1513. I have 1514. And then nobody has 15, 15, or 16, at least that, that has messaged me yet. And that's the two Judah Hip at the Hickory. So if anybody has those, please let me know, because those, those slots are open. And then 17 is taken, but then 18, 19, and 20, nobody has mentioned that they have those either. So if you have any of those, let me know, because all those, so uh, 15, 16, 18, 19, and 20 are all open. And then from like 21 all the way up to like almost 40, I think we pretty much have all of them covered. I think there's only one we're missing within that whole long stretch, which is pretty awesome. So we'll get a lot of very consistent, you know, uh, videos put out and very consistent uh, with the numbers as well. We won't have many gaps at all, except for these few teens. The teens seem to be the really hard ones so far to find. So uh, if you have any of those, please let me know and um, I'll get, you know, we can get you up doing those videos and we can get them on the playlist. So as far as for this video today, we're going to be talking about one of my favorite artists of any label and one of my favorite Blue Note artists. And sadly, he doesn't really have much Blue Note output. He kind of moves around after this. He puts out three really good albums uh, in the early 1500 series. And then after that, he moves on and you don't really see, he doesn't really come back to Blue Note again. Uh, maybe I think there's one other Blue Note he's on as a sideman, and that might be it. But other than that, he's got three as a leader. And then after that, no more no more sessions as a leader. So we're going to be talking about 1513, one of my most favorite Blue Notes in general. And it is this amazing album, Detroit, New York Junction by the great Thad Jones. And you can see there it is Blue Note 1513. And uh, he, what's interesting about this one, and there's a few within the 1500 series where this happens, is there's actually alternate covers for this. So the original cover for this one, the picture actually is going diagonally in the other direction. And what I did was I actually pulled out the Blue Note guide that I have, and I showed this on one other video, but uh, this, this from the Jazz Record Center, and they actually have a picture of the two covers so you could see. So there's the original cover um, where, where the Detroit is slanted you know, on the left-hand side moving up. And then this one, you could see that it's on the right-hand side moving down. And that's the alternate cover. So you could see that obviously mine, um, mine here is the alternate cover. Now this is not an original pressing. This is a classic records reissue. Originals of these go into the thousands and thousands range. Uh, very, very hard and sought after early Blue Note. Now you could see the lineup there. It's got Thad Jones on trumpet. Billy Mitchell on tenor sax, Kenny Burrell on guitar, Tommy Flanagan on piano, Oscar Pettiford on bass, and Shadow Wilson on drums. Got five tracks in total, three on side one, two on side B. And I don't know if you're familiar with classic records or not. If you're not, um, I feel like a lot of us probably are, but if you're not, what they did was they tried to mimic, you know, they were kind of one of the earlier reissues that were doing the analog sourcing and, um, and they tried to mimic the original jackets as best as they can. They did the tip-on jackets, and um, and they actually even mimicked the deep groove on this. So this one's going to say that it has a Lexington Avenue address, but obviously, like I said, this is a classic record to repress, but they, they did that deep groove and mimicked that. Um, and what's interesting about this album, and I don't have an original to compare it to, and I don't know if you could see it, but look how much dead wax is on that. And it really makes this record sound really good because um, everything's on that outer ring. It is 33 RPM, but there's a lot of dead wax on this record. So um, in saying that, let's actually get to the music now because the music on this is phenomenal. So it starts off with a song by Thad Jones, and the name of that song is called... Um, Blue Room, and Blue Room is uh, quite an extensive song. So all of the songs on this, for the most part, everybody gets a lot of room on this album. This, this album has a lot of room for everyone to solo. So track one 
it starts off with an absolutely gorgeous tone by Billy Mitchell on the sax. He then uh, he does his his head with the band. He does his solo. Then Kenny Burrell moves into a solo, which is awesome. He's got these great lines in it where he keeps alternating between these um, different kind of pentatonic passages. It's awesome. And then um, from there, it ends up going to a very, very lyrical solo by Oscar Pettiford. And if you know Oscar Pettiford, you know his solos can be quite lyrical. He was a phenomenal bass player and awesome solo by him. Then Thad Jones comes in. So again, right off the bat, it's kind of a, a, a little bit of a atypical presentation where you get the leader of the session is not taking a solo till the fourth person, which is actually pretty consistent with a lot of Thad Jones stuff. He gives his he gives his musicians a lot of space, and he doesn't hog. You know, he tries it. He really was very gracious in the way that he would manage his band. He really gave people the opportunity to really shine, which was really cool. And then Flanagan takes this awesome solo at the end of the song. And overall, it's a pretty long song. I think it ends up being like a six minute song, which starts off, which is, you know, right off the bat, a very different feel, I think, than a lot of these other early 1500s, where they were mostly comps, truthfully. And they were kind of to the point where you you were getting three, four minute songs and then moving on. And there's, the, you know, each side was getting six songs on it and they were very short. This is not like that. These songs really stretch and really give the players a lot of time to play. Then it moves into Tariff, which is the second song, um, which also is a Thad Jones song. This song really swings. The head of it is this great chromatic passages. Billy Mitchell again takes a great solo. He goes first. Then Flanagan comes second. And then once more, you see Thad Jones coming in third. So again, he's not trying to steal the show from his musicians. He's letting them play. And that particular song really, if you read the liner notes on that one, what's really interesting about how they explain that is that it is, and I'll use the words exactly, and, and Leonard Fenner wrote this, and this is a Reed Miles cover, by the way. This is a Reed Miles cover, and obviously a Francis Wolf photo. But what's pretty cool is they say for track two, Tariff, that it, gent, uh, it is a trip that gently uh, over the tenor's second line into an ingenious ensemble. And I think that that's a really good way of describing how they really kind of utilize the whole band, not just do the traditional, like we're going to do a head, one person will take a solo, maybe we'll take, you know, a few more passages of that and then get back in. Like, that really gives his musicians time and space to express themselves. Uh, Little Girl Blue is a uh, Rodgers and Hart song. And this is actually probably one of the most interesting songs on the whole album. My favorite song personally. And it's actually just Thad on trumpet, Kenny Burrell on guitar, and Oscar Pettiford on bass. So the other players lay out. And it is such a beautiful, beautiful song. The line by Thad is so lyrical, so expressive. Burrell is so expressive. Oscar Pettiford underpins it with this great bowing. And then he does this just, you know, if you know Pettiford, he also played cello. And he almost plays this song with a cello-like nature. And it's gorgeous. It is such a beautiful song. It actually starts off where it reminds me of um, I Could Have Danced All Night. Um and just the, the the melody line on it is so good. So you flip it over to side two, and there's two originals by Thad. The first one is called Scratch. And for Scratch, it is such a long, like, it encompasses half this album, half side two. It's like a nine or ten minute track. It's phenomenal. And the head is great. Pettiford takes this awesome, awesome line that really underpins the whole song. Thad has a really long solo in that song. It's the only song I feel like that Thad really kind of showcases Thad, so to speak. And it's so lyrical. Flanagan has this great syncopated line that's underpinning the solo. Burrell has this great solo. Flanagan still underpins it with this great syncopated line. 
then Flanagan takes a solo, then Mitchell takes a solo, then Pettiford takes a solo. So the only one that doesn't take a solo is actually Shadow Wilson, the drummer. And it is just, it's a great, just beautiful arcing song that, that is just well worth, honestly, the whole album. That song is phenomenal. Then the last song on the whole album is called um, Zek, and it's spelled Z-E-K. And this is the fastest track on the song. Thad actually out the gate really is, is blowing on this song. He is really playing and really, really emphasizing, you know, that he also can be a, a, a player with some kind of intensity level. He's normally a very lyrical player, but on this he shows like he can also kind of punch it if he needs to. And Burrell takes a really good solo. Flanagan takes a really good solo. Mitchell takes a solo. I mean, you're getting a trend. Like this album really gives everybody chances to stretch and take solos. And then the only part that, you know, we see that's like unique to this song compared to the others is they do a section where they trade fours and Wilson gets a chance to really take a solo and really do a, a phenomenal solo. Shadow Wilson was a great drummer, great, great drummer. He was on a lot of early 1500 series stuff because he was a player from the 40s and 50, early 50s. And so he was on all the 78s. So you see him on those. He was on this album. He played on that great album that uh, Monk at Carnegie Hall that has Coltrane on it. Shadow Wilson was on that album. And his he is just such a foundational drummer. And if you look at a lot of earlier like drummers that came after him, they will cite Shadow Wilson as influence. So um, that is Thad Jones, Detroit, New York Junction. Go check this out online. You could find this online. I highly recommend this album. This is one of my favorites within the early 1500s. This is one of my favorite Blue Notes, period. I love Thad Jones. I think he's a very special player. And I think this album is well worth the time to listen to and enjoy. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I will see you for 1514. Um, probably in a few days and then we'll get moving along in this series and there's a lot of other people that are going to start participating um, this was that stretch as I said that no one else had so I, I took a lot of these because no one else had them and then this next stretch we're going to get a lot of other people involved a lot of other voices on this so we can get a lot of different viewpoints on these great albums and all these different you know just artists that express themselves in different ways we'll be able to see everyone's opinion on them and see what and where they connect with them in different ways. Because that's the beauty of this music is everybody is able to connect with it in a different way. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time.